Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So, evening everyone. My name is Zivko Kolev, and uh, I'm part of the Zapfest crew. Uh, handling the, the speakers and uh, tonight's topic is the ads. I'm sure all of you that have developed ads have or at least considered the, the ad supported version of those apps. Carlo, uh, tonight's speaker, will talk about the ads. He has about 20 or so apps published in the marketplace, free or paid, and he's going to share the experience that he has. Without further ado, Carlo. Hi, uh, thanks everyone for showing up. This is a pretty big crowd, so I'm excited um, to see everyone here. Uh, I guess people want to make some money, so that's, that's good. Um, the way I'm going to do it is sort of tell my story over the, the past year or so as a Windows Phone 7 developer, um, the highs and the lows. And along the way, if you have questions about certain things, um, feel free to interrupt me, wave, wave your hands, whatever it takes, and I'll try to answer them. Um, so, I'll just uh, get started. So, originally when I started developing apps, uh, I would, I personally, oops, sorry about that. I personally was, just felt ads were really distracting. Uh, I didn't want to junk up my apps with ads. And I thought they just took up way too much scre screen real estate on such a little device. And, you know, overall they just suck. Um, but my dilemma was, I was making some apps that you know, were fun for me to get familiar with the phone, learn how to use the accelerometer. And like, for me, I was like, well, who's actually going to spend a dollar for this? So I'll put it out there for free and you know, just give away my code. And maybe I'll put it out there for a dollar as well, and you know, someone will accidentally buy it. Um, <laughs> and it turns out people did buy it, which was the biggest surprise for me. But you know, not many. So. Um, why I changed my mind, uh, I think it was December, like right after the Windows phones released, I heard Angry Birds was making over a million a month on advertisement, so that just really shocked me and I heard now it's probably more like 20 million. Um, and it seems to work for that company, Google. Um, they give away almost all their stuff for free and, and use ads, so I figured what the heck. Um, I added a little ad at the bottom of this. You know, it didn't really take away too much from this exciting app, but you know, I figured I'd give it a try. Uh, first, made like a couple cents a day, and then next day, ten cents, twenty cents, and went home one day from work and was like, "What the heck? I, I made a dollar on ads. Like, how many people were viewing this? It was just really confusing to me. Um, like, they just sit there for hours, like shaking the phone up and down, or, uh, uh, but hey, whatever." Um, but I really started to think, like, what would a good app actually make? Um, like, what could I do if I, you know, spent more than a few hours making an app uh, to actually engage someone? Um, so, a month later, I kicked out a bunch of other free apps. So I have a fortune cookie app where you can shake your phone, it gives you a fortune. Um, and the dice, same thing. I was really liking the, playing with the accelerometer. And um, actually, the one that really sort of got me excited was uh, my, sh my shotgun app. Um, that one was actually fun for, for me to play with, and uh, we, we would use it at Scrum and, you know, see whose turn it is to talk and, and shoot each other. And, um, you know, every one of my teams running around shooting each other. So it was a fun app for me. Um, and, you know, sirens and things that probably drive their parents crazy when, you know, the kids running around the house with a loud, annoying siren. Um, so everything was good. You know, I was actually starting to make, you know, some money. It was, it was exciting and a fun journey. Um, but a common question everyone was asking me is, you know, what should I do? Should I give a, a free app or a paid app? Um, you know, what is the right thing to do? And I didn't know myself, so... I figured I would have a, a test, release the same exact app with a different name, different icon, and you know, see which one makes more money. 
So for me, it was Guns and Guns Pro. And Free won uh, by a huge factor. Um, and it still continues to this day, just blow away the, the paid version. Um, and maybe that's not a fair comparison because, you know, why pay for something if you get it free? Uh, hold on one second, I need to share the content. I guess I got kicked off the link. Am I a presenter? Um, well, there, there is this link that someone just shared, so if, if you're uh, online, you might be able to get to it. Sorry about that. So, free wins. Um, but, yeah. Um, when you say it won by a free, uh, by a huge amount, was that the number of installs or? Um, no, that's as revenue? that's revenue. Um, so I, I currently I probably make more each day than I do in, in a month of people buying the apps, and that's sort of across the board. Um, it, but you know, it's it may not be the best test because it. It actually is. I mean, people may realize there is a free and a, and a pro, and they are the same thing. I don't know. Um, but for me, it's, it's definitely worth giving it away because I think of myself, too. Um, which apps do I put on my phone? Which apps do I download? And I, I typically buy, that, or to buy, I download the free ones um, a lot more than I would go out and buy a bunch of paid apps. Um, and that's going to vary for the type of your app. Probably not all apps should be free, but. Um, anyways, it wasn't all good. Um, so before I get into the details here, the one thing with ads is eCPM. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, the easiest way to explain it is how much you get paid for a thousand impressions. Um, that's a thousand people just viewing the ad. They don't have to click on it. It's just views. Um, it's very volatile. So this is one day, um, and for whatever reason, it. I, I call it a roller coaster, and some days it's really low, and some days it's really high. Um, and every once in a while, it just drops off. And uh, this was back in March last year. It dropped from make, like eight dollars for a thousand views down to ten cents for a thousand views. So it was really crushing at first when this happened. I was just you know devastated to see like, oh, now I'm no longer making money. Set by some higher up somewhere, or is this just um, money you were bringing in? So this was just my app, uh, the eCPM that I was getting, and it varies by app. Uh, I could have the same exact apps with two different ad controls, and I no one really knows the the details of how it works, but people will bid on to put an ad space in. So sometimes the bids are high, sometimes it's low. So for this one, it could be that uh, you know, Groupon or whoever's buying ad space at that time says, I don't want to advertise at all in between 2 and 3 a.m. in the morning and 6 and 7 at night. I, I don't know why it so fluc fluctuates like that, but it does, so you've got to be prepared for it. Um, and, and this was one that got a lot of people in uproar because this wasn't just me. This was uh, pretty much everyone across the board who was using ads at the time. So for me, I said, now what? Do I just give up? Do I throw in the towel? Or um, I figured I'd try Google's AdMob because um, there are competitors, so I, you know it's good to check that out and see what's there. So for me, I figured I'd try with one app, and what I needed to do was download their software, and like all Google software, when it comes out, it's beta. Upgrade my apps, um, submit the apps for certification, wait a couple days require all my users to go and download and cross my fingers that Google's eCPM was higher. So this was you know, a bet. I had no idea if it would work. And sweet, I'm making money again. Uh, it, my eCPM slowly rose to $2.04, which I was happy with. But it was still a pain for me to do this. And what happens if Microsoft started to pay $4 and I had to have all my users download the app and upgrade again? 
Um, but the one thing I did learn from Google's is they have some very nice reports, and one of the columns they had was fill rate. What I learned is ads don't always fill. So for a lot of times people were viewing my apps, the ad control says, go get the next ad, and it returns and says, there's nothing. Um, so for, for Google, it was low as 64%. So I was thinking, wow, that's, that's a waste. Like, you know, I was actually getting less impressions than I could. So what could I fill in that space with? And for me, uh, the, the common thing that you know, I wanted to do was advertise my other apps. Um, people always say, well, you know, how do I get noticed? Or how do people find my app in the App Store? Well, I was lucky enough to already have some apps being viewed a lot of times each day. So I wanted to advertise my new app in my existing apps. Um, so I just stopped for a moment, and there was a problem I wanted to solve. Uh, I needed something that I could switch my ad from Google to Microsoft on the fly without needing to update all my apps, go through that work, and require my users to, to update. I also wanted to have the ability to say 50% of the time show people advertisements for my brand new app that I just put out there or to you know, some of my, exist, <clears throat> my existing paid apps. Um, it's very common for me in my free version to put an ad to say buy the paid version or buy you know, my expensive 999 app. Um, and I wanted to just be able to, to do all this on the fly, and that, and that was the key thing to me. So this is how I implemented it. Um, people can implement it in different ways. Um, I wrote my own ad control. So this is the Silverlight XAML. And what people, uh, you just have to do is you have all your different IDs that the ad companies give you, and you just enter them in there. And my web page takes care of everything else. So the way it works, the app loads, and it uses what I have as the default ad provider. Um, it calls up to my server and um, asynchronously gets the data about what the setting should be in the future times people load the app. And then it stores that on the phone in isolated storage. So the next time they load it, it says, is anything in storage? If so, use those settings and uh, make a request out and see if anything has changed since last time I phoned home, basically. And, um, is it a stress or is it expensive? Um, so I originally just did this really fast on, on a weekend. So I did the easiest thing I knew how, which was GoDaddy, because um, I had existing websites there. I have since got an Azure account, and I want to move it over to Azure. I haven't yet. But for me, I think it probably gets like 60,000 um, hits a day. So it's, it's probably peaks and valleys there, but it seems to do fine. And it was also really important for me when I was developing this to make it good enough that even if there was no network connection or things fell apart, I didn't want my control to be causing my apps to crash. So that's really where I spent most of my time. Um, but it, eventually, I, I plan to move it over onto my Azure instance, and I could use the CDN to cache and have better performance there. So. I'll actually switch over to uh, a demo if the demo gods allow it. Um, so these are what I, I called the house ads. So uh, I could create one. This is just text of, uh, for my app. And I, I just have some basic information. So the number of impressions for the ad and the clicks. So this is actually people, they see the ad and they click on it. Um, the most impressive thing here to me was the click-through rates that I have are remarkable. So in my Guns app, I will advertise the Guns Pro, which is the same thing. And I have a click-through rate of 15% almost, which is great. I don't know how many of those people will actually buy it once they see it's the same thing. Um, the idea was eventually that really will be a pro version with you know, all the great features that I never have time to implement. Um, and if I click on my ads, I can, I'll just show you an existing one. So I have my quote of the day, and I could say, in the United States, 
use Google, or I could switch it to Pub Center. And in other countries, use Pub Center. And I can adjust my percentage of how much time, or how many, what percentage of the time to show my ads. So if I come up with a brand new app and I want people to find it, I'll just crank all these up to 100%, and uh, you know, everyone will see my next big app that comes out. But as I do this, I realize, well, then I'm not going to get paid that day. So it, it's the decision you have to make what's more important to you. So put screenshots in here just in case that didn't work. Um, so now I just have some like general tips. Um, so I tell everyone to read reviews because they really are your friend. Um, there's a little asterisk down there. Sometimes you'll read a review and you'll get really upset. You know, don't worry about it. I've got plenty of those. But what you can find in there is a lot of great feedback. And most importantly, don't just use your reviews. Use your competitors' reviews. So I was making a news app for the Drudge Report. And what I did was, before I even started, I looked at all the reviews for all the iPhone apps that do the same thing. And I saw, oh, what people like, what people don't like. People were very opinionated. Um, and what I got out of that was there was actually a lot of users saying, why doesn't this person offer a paid version? I'd gladly pay a dollar to remove the ads. And I was just like, great. Yeah, I could, I could definitely do that. Um, and you'll, you'll get a lot out of that. Um, but don't get discouraged when you get a few uh, people saying nasty things. Um, the other thing I do is I put, I normally give all my uh, apps a trial mode, which is basically the free app with ads inside of it. Um, so this is the example in that Drudge Report app. Uh, I have a uh, button to remove advertisements because sure enough, I had a lot of people complaining. I hate ads, I hate ads. And I'm, so I was like, well, you hate them enough. Give me 99 cents and you know, shut up. Uh, so I don't know how many people will actually, they go through and they pay it, but there's a decent amount every month of people that are actually buying it. So I don't know why or how, which way they get there, but it happens. So for me, that's, that's good. Do you feel that that's profitable? I, I think so. Um, I've, I've gotten enough people buying it to say that um, it makes sense. And for me, if it was an app that I used multiple times a day to get that real estate back is maybe worth 99 cents. And uh, I, I think if you can make an app that is worth 99 cents, that's a good way to sort of tease someone in. Like, oh, you like it? You like it? Pay, you know, pay me. Um, Why did you take that number, 99 cents? Why not 3.99? Um, I've, I've tried a bunch of different prices, but I find that a lot of people are just really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had big plans for my golf app. I spent countless hours on it, working day and night all summer before the Windows Phone came out. And someone came out with one for $1.99. I'm like, oh my God, it's going to charge $10 for mine. Um, but that was an interesting app for me because I realized I, I tried different price ranges, and there's a lot of studies online. You'll find more for iPhone and Android than Windows Phone. But the studies showed that 99 cents has a percentage of people that'll buy it. Somewhere from 99 cents and above to $3, people view it as the same. It's not a 99 cent app. And above $5 was the same up until $10. And if you're going to price it above $10, you might as well make it 30 because those are the people that just really don't care. Um, so you could play around with all of it on the fly now, which is nice. You used to have to, I think, update your apps so you can go to the website and, and try it. Have you gotten expectations of support or any demands being made from your page users? Um, I, in a lot of my apps, I'll have a link for support where people can email me. Um, definitely choose a non email address that you want to actually use because I get probably 50 emails a day that just say sent from Windows Phone in every different language we have. Um, it's, it's pretty cool to see, but then other people will attach photos of their kids for some reason. <laughs> Send me those. Um, I get the default backgrounds for the phone. I think people get into the email app and they don't know what to do and they just start clicking on buttons and eventually they send me mail. 
Yeah. Um, have any of your reviews uh, been about not liking ads, and also how's your experience with uh, ad center? Um, the like the ad mob or Microsoft's. Um, so for me, I will almost entirely use Microsoft's Pub Center. I find that they pay a lot better price than Google's does. Um, I don't know, I, I, I guess I want to ask other people here because I want to get this information for my, myself. I've had a lot of attempts and often I'll get zero or like max 20 cents on ECPM, whereas on Microsoft, under a dollar, I view as bad personally. Um, you know, I have three, four boxes is what I hope for. Um, so I know some other people here have, have used these. Like, what kind of ECPM is people seeing, and what what do they view as good? If you don't want to share, that's fine. But yeah. You have strategies for picking which categories of ads you. Yeah, I'll get into that. Does anyone want to share their ECPM? I guess one dollar. <laughs> How much? One. One dollar. Yeah. I went mine for like three days. It's around 80 cents to 120. Yeah. And especially at first, the ECPM will be relatively low until you sort of have a reputation you build up. Uh, I think this is what they told us at a talk they gave before. Um, once they have history on an app, then people will bid higher. So if I have a higher click rate, more people want to advertise in my app for whatever reason and then they'll bid higher to be in my particular app or me as a publisher versus another uh, publisher. Another thing I found out that it's the same two or three ads that gets repeated continuously. Yeah, so he said it's the same. I had repeated over and over, and I, I see that as well. Yeah. You get two to three on average. Two to three? Yeah, yeah that, that's pretty good. That's what I hope for in most of mine. If, if I'm lucky, it's four. But, and it fluctuates daily. Um, did was we put some buttons closer to the ad control. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a, it's a it's an interesting yeah, one. It's like, yeah. um, and it's easy to go back. So yeah, it, but it, it's really like do you want to have a great app or do you want to have it like if, if you annoy people too much, do you want to have a great app or do you want to have it like if you annoy people too much, they're gonna stop using your app and then you're not gonna get any impressions. So. Yeah. So it 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 is. Like I, I realize for some of mine, people are probably accidentally clicking on the the ads because you know they're shaking their phone and doing funny things with it, um, and that could be why some of them are higher. Uh, the ad team gave a presentation um, before, and they talked about some of this. And if companies realize that they're benefiting from your ads or your app, they will continue to invest in it. But if they see that they spent a thousand dollars and they got nothing in return. Then they'll stop bidding on you as a publisher. Uh, but it, I mean, a lot of my apps have the buttons close, and, and you know, I, eventually I, I gave up on that. I didn't find it made too much of a difference for me. If you think of it from the advertiser end, which anybody can be an advertiser and something, is that you will pay, say, for your ninety-nine cents app. App for ads, and you want to see how many sales you get back from it. And putting an ad next to the button, if you click and it press back, the advertiser will quickly realize that your app is not bringing them sales, and they will bid much less. So I mean, it may increase your CPM momentarily for a week or two, but then it will go down. Okay. Yeah, and and I I'll, I'll get into it in a little bit. I have a slide on it, but um, for me, like my shotgun app or my guns app, I said, what kind of ads would people want to see for that? You know, I could show them ads for uh, flowers or if you're shopping or, you know, I'm not sure what other funny examples I could have there. But for me, I picked military, hunting, and my ECPM was the highest it, it ever, ever was. And it continued to grow. And I think you know, for, for me, it was actually interesting to click on this and go and navigate this guy's website who was paying all this money. Um, and he was selling gun accessories and things. So he was probably seeing a benefit of advertising on my app, so therefore he continued to invest. I mean, try to put yourself in people's shoes. I've tried to advertise on various sites, and if I found that it wasn't worth my investment, I stopped. Um, 
and eventually uh, the military start advertising in my apps for a while and um, they paid really high too so you know sort of a circle of money coming to me and back and um, but they they stopped and my ECP, ECPM just dropped like I could tell that one day I had the government advertising in my app and the next day I didn't and it, it dropped in half um, yeah um, based on impressions rather than click only yeah, um, so Google pays, I think, more on clicks, if I remember correctly. And Microsoft does pay on impression. Um, but I think it's the same, same argument is people will stop paying for the ads if they're not finding benefit. Um, so if people are clicking on it and doing click fraud and stuff like that, uh, you know, it, in the end, you may not continue to make money. Does the ECPM depend on the category of the ads that you pick? Oh, like. Yeah, I wish there was a good science to, to picking these categories. And what happens for me is I won't pay attention for a while and I'll log back in and realize, oh, ECPM fell at some point. I didn't even realize it. Um, and then the only thing I have to do is try a different one. In the case where the military stopped advertising, and I think it was under careers slash military was the category I was picking. No one else was advertising there, so I removed that because it was a waste of a category for me. Um, what is the geography? Like in India, probably some of us have I so he was asking about how does uh, the the different locales and geography the matter for your ads and I don't I don't really have any answers there um, eventually I my plan was to change my ad control to actually pass up the the locale and see which places are filling and which ones aren't so I know you know potentially in China we don't have any ads I have no idea um, I think we just started you know having apps for sale there so I, I don't know if we have an ad presence there you can actually query on Pub Center if you create a report. Oh. Um, if you create an ad unit report, you can check a market checkbox, and then you can see how many impressions, what CPM you're getting per market. Okay. That's neat. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Report fill rate. Yeah. I think I've heard that impressions are really just the number of ads requested. Like okay. Distinguish between requests that's and That's good to know. But you can't see that your CPMs in a lot of non US markets are. Zero. Yeah, that oh, probably yeah. that probably means there's no ads or click yeah. on. Yeah. It's also why CPMs can move up and down during the day, or one reason. Mm -hmm. Because um, when you're getting more international traffic, CPMs are typically lower. Yeah. When you're getting more US traffic at times of the day, they go higher. Okay. Is there a way to know that you're not getting an ad, so that you could just put your house ad in? in a um. Yeah. So the the way I do it is, all the controls they report an error when they don't fill. So my control, I mean, there's not much logic there. Like on that event, I just fill in my own ad. And that, that could fail because no network connection. And then I, I'll still throw up my house ad there. And if people try to go to the marketplace, it may or may not work, depending on uh, if they get network connection or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's easy to, to sort of hook up to that event. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, my ECPM is around two dollars. Two dollar ECPM. That's um, good. My, my experience. I'm wondering if you've experienced the two where my ad control seems to show ads that are irrelevant to the categories. Yeah. So he said his ads are not really what he's picking in in his categories, and I've I've seen that too. I think like Groupon for a while was appearing in all my ads, and I think they said any ad category show Groupon. Um, I don't know, maybe they, they got a ton of money IPOing or something and just were throwing it out there. Um, yeah, I, I guess it, it depends on who, what they want to advertise for. But they're, they're probably picking to just advertise everywhere. It's supposed to be related to your app. So they're trying to say, hey, I want to advertise for these people. Right. So, um, so they're doing the same thing. I guess that agree. It's like uh, you could advertise 
MSDN subscription in, in some team magazine if you wanted to. It's not probably going to do very well, but we can do that. So I'll, I'll try to move along. These, these are great discussions that I want to have, but I also want to keep in mind that if people are on link, they may not be able to hear our discussion we're having here, which, and, that, and that sort of stinks for them. When this is recorded, you're able to hear that because they have the room microphoned up and they turn up the volume when people are talking. So if you're in the link call, like you can hear these discussions later. And we'll try to keep some more towards the end because um, this is actually beneficial to me to hear what everyone else is saying, so hopefully that continues. Um, so for trials, I, I show the ads and trials. This is the, the code snippet that I use to do that. Um, this allows me to test the trial mode, which is important, obviously. And what I do is I store this on when the app loads, and then my, my view model of my app binds to that. So if, it, if trial is set to true, then I set the visibility of my ads to true and the button to buy or to go from trial to purchased. I make that button visible. Um, so we talked a lot about this. Uh, that, that's good. You guys sort of flowed right into this. I just didn't keep up. Um, the other thing to think about is to understand when people are using your apps. Um, I found this particular one interesting. Uh, I just grabbed this from TechCrunch. There's a bunch of other st studies and charts of companies putting out this data. What's really interesting to me was to see, uh, and after I, I, I saw it, it made sense, people use their computers when they're at work and when they get home. Phones and, and tablets are just starting to dominate. Um, so for my, for my particular apps, I see a lot of them have high use Friday and Saturday night. Um, I think it's the bar crowd out there with their friends, you know, and having fun with my apps. Uh, so if I could choose, maybe I would choose, you know, Budweiser to advertise in my app. So I, I try to think about this. Um, I probably wouldn't want to advertise Starbucks coffee for people using my app in the middle of the night. But my news app, I, I realize people are probably waking up in the morning like I do and reading the news. So that might help me choose my category. Um, so I, I got this question just earlier today. How do you manage having two versions of the app? And originally I was doing a lot of file copying around and um, commenting things out and remembering to remove comments when I submit the different version, um, which was a pain for me and actually error prone. I've before I have submitted paid apps with advertisements in them and quickly had to revert that. and. Then I started to use Git, which is uh, a free file or source control management system. Um, it's very popular out there. If you haven't used it, it's pretty easy to use. And I create two branches in my code. One branch has the free parts of the app. I'm sorry, what was that? Link failed again. I'm, I'm not sure what can be done for that. Uh, share, desktop, there we go, great. Ah, oh, come on. We're close to the end, so don't worry. So I have two branches, one for the free, one for the, one for the paid. In it just allows me to quickly switch in between the two. So all the code's the same except for like 10 lines in my app. And if I'm about to submit for free, I actually even, it comes with a Visual Studio add-in. Well, it's an extra add-on you can download for Git. And I just, in my drop-down, change from free to pro, and it, on the fly, just switches all the code. And um, then I can submit, just recompile and submit. So th that's actually very useful for, to me. for me. It took me forever to bite the bullet and learn how to use Git, but after a few hours, I was, I was loving it. Um, so the summary that, that I have is you know, I realized maybe ads don't suck. In, in fact, I've grown to love them. Um, and sometimes they're creepy. When my phone was showing me an advertisement for ASP.NET controls, and I'm like, how do they know I write web pages? But um, it was. You know, they're good for you if you're a developer and try not to hate them too much. 
Um, handle the case when your ads don't fill, because that could be the best way to promote your other apps, or if you're nice, your friends' apps, or your web page, or whatever you want to send them to. Um, for me, I'm thinking about other things I could possibly do with my impressions. Um, so from, I have a friend who has a, a clothing company, and he has some T-shirts that have you know, guns on them and things. So I'm like, hmm, maybe we could partner together. I could get him traffic on his website, and he could pay me. Um, so ha handle those cases, and prepare yourself for the good and bad days. I, from month to month, the, the amount Microsoft deposits in my bank account can be uh, no exact numbers, but three times as much as the month before, and then it could drop back down. So and it, for me, it's always like, uh, is this going to be the last month where I have you know, a nice big paycheck at the end of the month, or is it, you know, it going to end? Um, and upsell your, your, your paid apps, or your free apps to paid apps, because like I said, there is people that are clicking on that. For me, it, it's surprising every time I see it. Um, and I think that's all. So um, if anyone has any questions, uh, the, the one thing I did want to mention, uh, that website, I, that the, the way that I do this, my original plan was to just make it available to everyone. Because um, for me, it was a quality gate, like make it good enough to ship to the world, and then it would be good enough for mine. Um, I don't want to do that until I switch it over to my Azure instance and can scale up and down if, if load gets really high. But if you are interested in, in helping me work on that, like I'd gladly share the code with whoever and, and try to make it useful for more than myself. Um, and the good news about it, like this is going to be useful for me in Win8 when I make apps for Win8 because it's the same concepts across the board, iPhone, Android. You, you, these are problems that you should be thinking about and how you're going to solve them. Um, so if you are interested, talk to me afterwards, and maybe we can you know, partner up and, and do something. Uh, so is there other things, questions people wanted to talk about? I'd gladly uh, continue. Yeah? So do you have two copies of your apps where you have the one free and one paid with the trial? Um, and I ask this because you said uh, you put a button in your apps to uh, direct people to purchase the app, but I'm thinking that people are more likely to download a free app than a paid app with a trial mode. Yeah. Um, and in that case, how do you? I, I always try to make my app appear in as many places as possible. So that's, if it's, fr I want it to appear as free, because a lot of people only look at free. I want it to appear under the paid column as well, and the trial ones appear under there. So they both will end up, um, I submit both of them. And that's where I was used before copying around a bunch of files. They were almost the same. I had two folders, and I was trying to manage this. And that's where uh, using the Git really helped me out. Yeah? Uh, it's about the free versus paid. The, could you not conditionally compile from just one source piece? Do you need to have two branches? You can. Um, I, I saw a really nice, uh, so, so the question was, uh, can you conditionally compile the code? as an alternative, and that's an option too. Um, one of the Microsoft developers, uh, I can't remember his name, I could, I'll link to it when I, whenever we send out the, the recording. He found a way to, um, you can, I forget how to do this, where, in your app where you have debug and ship, or debug and release, he added uh, free and pro in there as well. And what that did is he had some pre and post commands that copied files around for him, which made it a little easier, but because XAML can't be conditionally compiled uh, was, was the issue there. So you could handle it then with all um, code behind instead as an alternative. Um, any other uh, question? Yeah? So you, in your graph, you said, you know, at certain times of day, you're going to get different uh, users. And like Friday and Saturday night, you've got more. Is there a way to to have your categories changed based on date and time? I'm not sure. I know that the Google AdMob has an, uh, an API you could use. I don't know what it's for. I have never had time. I just see at the bottom that there's an API. Um, I've thought about ways to take, take, use that to my advantage. Um, one of the other things I was thinking about is, could I put on my other hat 
and be a fake publisher and try to bid on things just to see where the highest values were and then I would know where to put my, uh, my, my, my categories. So the idea there was I can make dynamic categories. So my, my server would just send down, today use clothing, tomorrow use whatever is the, the highest paying thing and just switch that on the fly. Um, I don't know if Microsoft has an API that we can use for that though. Yeah? Let's say you charge a dollar for your app. How long are you committed to support that app? Is that any guidelines? Let's say you are doing a newsletter app and after some time your source for news is gone. Yeah. So what do you do with that? So he was asking what, what, the, um, what your support is required to your users over a period of time. And th there may be some guidance on this somewhere. Okay. I don't know what it is. I try not to make things that are going to be a huge pain for me to maintain. Um, I have a few that have a, s a server backend, like I have a connected golfers app that stores all your golf stats on, in my cloud. And every year I have to spend money to maintain those servers. So I've, I've learned that the stupid silly apps make more money, so that's where I've started to focus. Um, it's important to realize your customers. So. Um, so any other questions? Yeah. Oh, great talk. Um, on Pub Center, there's two ad units and they're different sizes. Have you played with either the, the sizes or even blending the ad control into your page to make it not so ugly? <laughs> and then my other question was around ad units for feature tracking. So I was thinking of having a different ad unit per feature in my app. And it would be a way for me to tell what parts of my app is pop are popular. It's a big, it'd be a, be a bigger app. Do yeah. So, on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to work backwards. If I don't answer them all, yeah. ask ask me again. So he asked if if I can if if you can or should use different ads on maybe different pages. Uh, you can only have one per page by their policy. I've tried that and I found my eCPM across the board was lower, not just because. Well, I was getting less impressions per, the same impressions total, but each, each ad unit was getting lower impressions. And for whatever reason, maybe they appeared as less popular to the publisher. My eCPM was lower on all of them. So I, I eventually s split it less. So I still have two ad units instead of six, I think I had. And eCPM rose, and the total impression stays the same. Um, I've already forgotten the other questions. So what were they? The ad, unit size. ad unit size. I've only played with the with the big one. Um, I it fits nicely in my apps, and I haven't really had a reason to switch. Um, has anyone had experience with different size apps or ads? I think you're phasing out the small one. I was just wondering if I was using it. Oh. The smaller one gets yeah, very low fill rates. Okay, so you said the small app gets low fill rates. Yeah, yeah, the small app. I keep saying app, but ad. Um, any other experience with that? Uh, you had another question? Yeah, I just did. So I blend, like, oh, I didn't like the black because one of my apps was kind of blue, so I blended it in, you know, just changed it, restyled it. Is that allowed? I haven't, I haven't actually submitted There is a few things you're allowed to do. Um, so my newsreader app, has white background, so I, I can force it to always basically do the invert of, or I force it to always be white, so it blends a little nicer. Because uh, otherwise, I'd find on whatever theme you're working on, sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't. So you can override those styles, but I don't know what more you're allowed to do without breaking some sort of rules. So I haven't really played around with that too much. Yeah. How many impressions and how many users do you have? Um, I, I want to give away too much details here because you're, you're all smart enough to do math. Um, <laughs> but I, in October, I passed half a million. I half a million downloads. I don't know how many of those are active users. Um, most apps have short, short lifespan. Uh, I don't know how many I'm at now. I haven't really been paying attention. I'm hoping that the Nokia phone causes that number to, to sort of do the hockey curve growth. Uh, impressions is, is, is good. Um, 
you know, I, at first I had, had doubts, like I didn't want to come up here and, and, and do this, but, uh, and give this talk because it's like, oh, I don't want to give away too many secrets, you know, I don't want my coworkers to, to realize I'm making, you know, money on the side. And, and, uh, but for me, the, the ZapFest community is sort of where I got my start because I originally started going to the meetings because I was interested in the phones and making apps. I've never done that before. And I was always coming to see, oh, the new phone and, and try it out on, my on the developer devices that they let us use. And I, I sort of feel like I, I should give back to the community of any knowledge I have. Um, but for me, it's also nice to, to hear what everyone else is getting. So now I know to be happy when I have you know, above $2 eCPM because it's a little higher than everyone else in this room. Um, whereas before, you know, I just sat at home and scratched my head. Should I be happy if it's 125 or should I be sad? Um, and what, eventually you, you just have to stop caring about that or you'll, you know, there, there used to be days when I was starting, I, you know, a couple times a day I'd log in and check, oh, how much am I making today? And um, it just got exhausting, so I had to, had to stop. Um, yeah. How do you um, swap in your um, house ads? Do you, do you just like collapse the, the ad control and? Um, so the the way that works is um, when my ad loads, it reads from the the isolated storage and says what's your current settings. If it's Google, load the Google control into the the space. If it's Microsoft, use Microsoft. Uh, otherwise, use your third. And I mean, I may expand this to try out other ad platforms. There's a few out there now, but it's it's there's just you know an, an if block really in there that. Uh, it chooses which one to, to draw, and I do it from code behind. Yeah? Are you still going to do that, though? Because I thought I heard you saying that the Microsoft one was making you more money for CPM. Um, it, Microsoft one normally makes more money, um, but earlier this week I had one of those situations where I logged on and I went from making $2 a day down to $0.30 cents a day. No idea why, so the first thing I did was I switched my ad categories, got back up to 80 cents, and I said, hey, what the heck, I'll try Google again. And um, Google's had, after three days, eCPM was a high 23 cents for 1,000 views, which was crap, so I just switched it back and um, back to Microsoft for that app. So different apps, I try different things just to see, because there was a time I was getting $4 eCPM with Google's ad mob. Um, it has been a while, though. Yeah. Why do you wait for the next uh, launch of the title? Um, what was that? What you said you waited until they next launched it after after they downloaded settings to change the app. Uh, yeah. So why wait to the next time the app loads to show the ad? For me, every second counts for impressions. I didn't want to wait for my server to respond and tell me which ad to use. I wanted it to be you know, the same speed as normal, realizing that there's only so long someone's going to be using a shotgun app, so show them the ad as fast as possible. Um, and that allows the same exact speed as with, without using the system. Yeah? So how do you control the percentage that you uh, play with the app controls? First, you said you put it into isolated storage and then reform isolated storage. But how do you know how many uh, loads that you get and then calculate the percentage to see which um, settings to use? Yeah, so she was asking how, I, how each app knows when to show the health ad versus the, yeah. the paid ad. And um, it, it, it's just for me a, a basic um, random and a percentage. Uh, so, if it's one of ten, I'll I'll show it, and I, I just do a little bit of math there to choose the percentage. So you have to just periodically check the server and, and update their local storage. Yeah. Any other questions from anyone? Do you change during the app, or do you change during the load of the app? Uh, on the load of the app, I make an asynchronous request out, but. If it comes back, I'll wait to the next load. Um, mainly because it's, I've already did the work of loading the assembly into memory, and I didn't want to, you know, keep switching. And granted, that probably wouldn't happen too often because I don't 
I'm not actively every day switching them. Um, but I, I try to keep in mind these are phones with limited resources, so I just wait to the next time they use it. Uh, next question. I have a couple of questions. So one's like, what's the uh, distribution of users geographically? Is it mostly in the United States or is it outside? And the second one is uh, besides using ads within your apps, did you do anything else to market your apps or anything else to publicize it? Um, so I, I only have the reports that Microsoft gives on, uh, sorry, I had to repeat the question. Um, he was asking ge geographically where am I seeing the impressions and Google has a lot better reporting than Microsoft on this. Um, so you know, if the Pub Center guys are listening, better reporting would be awesome. Um, and it, it varies. Uh, I have m more downloads in the US than other countries. Uh, it would be interesting for us to sort of all compile some data and see where our downloads are happening. Europe has a high amount. Aus for my golf app, Australians love to golf. They, they download my app more than you know some colder areas, and that sort of makes sense to me. Um, so that depends. Um, yeah. What was your other question again? The marketing. Like, did you do um, anything? Better? So he was asking other ways I, I market my apps. Um, the one thing I tried was um, LinkedIn gave me a free ad credit to use. And it was actually fun for me because I said, show my ad to Microsoft employees of age 20 to 50. And um, it got like 17,000 impressions the first day. So I don't know what all Microsoft employees are doing on LinkedIn, but um, it, it was a, like a $50 free credit they gave. And I think that's because I put my company on, on the, the LinkedIn site so they realized I might have something to advertise. Um, I didn't realize that when I said $50 max, that that was $50 per day. So when I logged in a few days later, I'm like, oh, crap. Um, so, it actually got a, a pretty high click-through rate. They you know, sent me an email congratulating me that it had such a high click rate, but I knew you know, my market is Microsoft employees because high percentage of them having a phone. Um, was there another, another question back there? The same uh, app ID across all your apps and the same ID ID across all your apps? Uh, app IDs. So he asked if I use the same ad ID on all my apps or uh, I, I do a different ad ID on different apps, and in the, the one case I put in the, in the details page, I put a different ad than in the um, normal page. <clears throat> and for me, that was nice to see where people are going. I was sort of using them for analytics. Um, but I use different ad units across different apps. I try to match what they are. Um, so I'm not going to show um, hunting and fishing advertisements to my fortune cookie users. Uh, I, I, I know those are different and I try to try to do an attempt at matching that. Yeah. How about using location API and setting that control slot, controls location slot? I hear setting location API is good for eCPM. That's what um, the Pub Center team told us when they gave a talk a while ago. I don't use it because um, I'm very cautious of draining people's batteries, spinning up the GPS for, you know, just to choose the better ad. But Microsoft does a, a good job at finding your location anyways, even if you don't set that, using their anonymous live ID uh, special stuff they have. Um, so you may see it on your phones, you get advertisements for you know, a pizza place in Redmond, or they, they find information about you, so um, they can get better ads. Yeah? Given your app uh, seen by more users, have you done anything to make sure that your app shows up in the search results from the marketplace? So uh, notice my app, you know, I search for the name of my app, and it may not appear at the top, or I search for something that's very relevant uh, of my app and it doesn't even appear at all. 
And so he was asking, how do you get people to find your app? And I, with keywords is it one thing you get to pick. Um, I tried to make them match as much as possible, but it, it was definitely an issue for me that I saw. Um, and the one trick I had was uh, one of my apps wasn't getting downloaded at all. I changed the name, restarted a bit, resubmitted, and that app took off, whereas the first one sort of never got noticed. So there may be some luck there, too, of um, what time did you appear under the top of the new app section? So if you were unlucky, maybe you were way down in the scroll and no one got to you. And if you're at the top, people start downloading you, then you appear higher in the ranks and stuff. So you can't get discouraged and you know, try again. The hard part is writing the code. It's easy to submit again under a, a different name. Any other questions? Yeah? Uh, have you thought about adding in um, usage tracking? Since you're already hitting the web server anyway. Uh, usage tracking is, is something that's on my to-do list for a long time. I, I really want to do that. I, I, I find it very interesting. I've heard people of using Google Analytics for all their, their tracking and stats and reporting. And I think that's as easy as putting an image on your page that's uh, invisible. They give you like a one by one pixel. And then it just makes calls to the server. But um, try to be a good developer and not use up too much battery. You have to realize every time you spin up a 3G connection, um, there's a lot of overhead on the user's phone for that. Right, but given you're already calling. Yes, so, so for me, I was, I was planning on throwing up a little bit more information, but um, I, it's just a matter of uh, finding time to do stuff is, is, uh, is always hard. Not use other analytics frameworks like preemptive or very? Um, so, yes, have I thought about other analytics? Um, there's the preemptive one that I don't know what the current status is for that. They, they had a free usage for X number of months. I never put it in my apps because um, they were doing things that I didn't think were okay, uh, which was making a web request every time an event fired. Um, so like 3G connections are very expensive on the battery. So anytime it got to a counter, it would make a call to the web service when really I thought if I would implement it, I'd save all the stats and then on load, send a group of data. Um, so I don't, I guess I'm being too nice of a developer, but I, I didn't like the, their solution. They may ch have changed it by now, I don't know. Um, any other questions? So if someone has, has anyone done analytics on, on their app or put anything in there to figure out usage stats? Because that would be an interesting talk if anyone has, has done this. I'd love to hear what people are doing. Because we do, we do look for uh, what people have questions about and then we'll try to get a t someone to come in here and talk about it. Mike, you have a... I've been using preemptive for a while. The free offer expired. Uh -huh. Doesn't seem like they are really good replacement service. It's not really expensive. Um, so, yeah, I, how, how much I is preemptive? One app that has some basic analytics. Yeah, get some basic analytics out of ads, <coughs> um, just pub center ad units, and the pressure kind of up to be on that. I have yeah. I mean, having that data would be useful for, for me because I haven't localized any of my apps, and if I was getting interesting data, I, I might spend time to. Uh, localize my apps better. But other than that, I haven't thought too much about what I would do with that data if I had it. And Microsoft, uh, on MSDN site, they have general usage downloads by, by area. Yeah, do we have any more questions? Thanks, everyone, for sort of giving me your information. It's, it is useful. And thanks for coming out.